the power they need for traveling. Provided the seeds are given the right equipment, it can shift really heavy, bulky ones. Beside many a tropical river, there hangs the biggest of all seed pods, the sea bean. These huge containers house one of the most successful of all vegetable travelers. There's a groove across the pod between each seed, so that each can fall away independently in its own separate packaging. One by one, the sea beans start on their voyages. This one is setting off down a small river in Africa. After a few miles, even perhaps a few hundred miles, the seed arrives at the mouth of its river and makes its way through the mangroves to the sea. It can voyage through groups of islands and out into the open sea to ride the great ocean currents for as much as a year and still remain alive. Its protective packaging may become so frayed and tattered that it disintegrates and releases the seed. But even this is no disaster, for the seed is able to float by itself. Many, doubtless, are lost at sea, but some eventually reach another and maybe a distant coast. This one has landed on a tropical beach in northern Australia. But I've no idea where it came from. It could be from a tree just a few miles up the coast, or it could be from another continent. Sea beans are the great success story of seed distribution. Every year, they land on the coasts of Europe, having been brought there by the Gulf Stream from the Caribbean. Of course, it's too cold for them there, and they seldom germinate. But provided they land in the tropics, they will almost certainly grow. There's one standing at the head of this very beach. So, some plants send their seeds by sea, some by air, but most, in fact, use living.